Hello and welcome. I'm Desiree Frazier. This is It's Time. It's a program that's focused on looking at issues from a biblical perspective. Today we're talking with Teresa Adams. She's a Christian counselor in Jackson, Mississippi, and we have an appointment with her to talk about how to move on from life's painful hurts. This is Teresa Adams. As I mentioned, she's a Christian counselor, and we are talking about moving on from past painful experiences. Teresa, thank you for sitting down to talk with us about this. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How do you move past challenges in your life? How do you help people do that? Well, first, um, you have to become aware. You know, you can say, um, I'm going through this, but I really need you to uh, really stay. What really is going on? To really uh, put it out there. I, I call it putting it on the table. Let's see, and let's look at it. Let's really dissect it. What is this hurt? Why, why is it you know, hurting? What's going on? What happened? So I get history. I start off with history, trying to find out um, a little bit more about the person. So that helps me treat them, so to speak. Does that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. the start. You have people uh, that are dealing with physical hurts and pains, mm -hmm. um, abuse, all mm -hmm. types of situations. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. attack your heart. Right, so I check, uh, I reiterate, you've come to a Christian counselor and I say, you know, um, I'm going to help you but um, I'm, I need to know a little bit more about you. You've come to a Christian counselor. Tell me about your faith. Where, where does that lie? And then I see where they are in their spiritual walk. Um, and then we, we begin to uh, learn about trusting God. And uh, sometimes that takes a while and they will begin to see, okay, we, I, I understand. So. Uh, I, I give them, there's no magic here is what I tell them. There's no magic. I say, you have everything you need within you to deal with this. And then when I, and I'm saying that if we are at that point that we're, your faith is where it needs to be when I say you are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and he is your savior and he's tr you're trusting him with your life. He has become Lord of your life. Now we're able to work. We're able to re really rely on him. You know, I hear people talk sometimes and they, they use God's name, and, but they have no relationship with him. They, and, and they expect things to happen and that's not gonna happen. He needs you to acknowledge that you, are, you want to be obedient to him. You know, you want him to be Lord of your life. You, are, you have turned your life to, over to him because there isn't anything else. There's nothing else. So when you get there and you're relying on him, then that's when he can work and help you release some of that pain and that hurt. And sometimes if it's very deep, it takes a while because the devil brings it back up, rolls it over in your mind constantly. Like a tape recorder. Yeah. You yeah. know, sitting yes. on the shoulder going, mm -hmm. you're going to take that? Mm -hmm. You're going to forgive? Mm -hmm. You're going to let that go? Right. Saying that if you forgive, you're letting the person off the hook. And that's not the case. Forgiveness is all about you and how you deal with you. The other person you can't do anything about. You have to focus on yourself. But this person hurt me. This person has damaged me. I love that. That's what I want to hear. I want you to tell me all of that. And you know, I can even go with them and say, I am so sorry. And, and no, it's not fair. But I need you to make a choice to say, I'm going to walk away from it. It's not going to consume me. Don't give them the, that much power in your life because that's what you're doing. You're turning them over and, and giving them the power. They're, they're, you're like a puppet under them. So, so how it's do you a stop choice. that tape recording? Do you have scriptures for I them? I do, I do, okay. I do. Um, I believe it's 2 Corinthians uh, 10, four and five, and that is taking every thought captive and, and bringing it under the obedience of Christ. What did God say? about this situation when the devil is saying one thing. You know the devil is, he wants to destroy you. That's not what God, that's how, not, and God loves you. He doesn't want you. He wants what's good for you. Now, of course, 
in order to get good and to, 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 to receive what God has for us, sometimes he takes us through trials. And, 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 and that is okay. We no can one walk wants in. to go through pain. Well, I mean, and, I'm and I know that God <laughs> challenges us. Yes. But oh man. No, you know, nobody likes pain. But you know, I think our, our whole society, our whole, um, our, our Christian walk, our, our churches have, have, have told us that uh, we can have just happiness and joy and whatever and peace all the time. And, and that's not true. God uses uh, and uh, he allows us to go through some things because on the other side of that trial is where you're triumphing. But you've got to go through it. He's, he's working on you. For instance, I've been through a lot of difficult times in my life. Um, and through those times, every time I've, I've come to the end of it, I can see my, a growth period mm -hmm. where I'm relying on God more. Do you understand that we were created by God? Do you understand that? So if he's our creator and he's our Lord, he has every right to tell us what to do, what to do in this life. We are here for him. But we like to pick and choose. We'll do this, we'll obey this, but we don't want to obey that. Okay. We'll, we'll deal with this, but we don't want to deal with that. And, that. and that's okay. And if there's something that where you get stuck, that's fine. Let's talk about it. I want you to say, I don't want to do that. And that's okay. But in order for you to get to a, a different point, I need you to acknowledge, I don't want to do it. But if you truly want to do what God has said, then you'll say, Lord, I don't want to do it. I don't know how to do it, but I will do it. You know? So I it's will about do a it. personal love relationship with God. Oh, absolutely. The relationship with God is the ultimate for life here on this earth. There's nothing else. Not if you're not if you're professing Jesus as Lord. There isn't anything else. He has said what he wants from us. And and you know it's very important. I don't want to get to the judgment seat and uh, there's good and bad, you know, being uh, singled out and all of the things I thought were good and going, you know, you could, I mean, it could really be going to church and serving or whatever, but then I didn't do it with the right spirit and it wasn't where God really wanted me. I wasn't listening to him. And that, that is burn up. It's not okay. So it's very important that we seek out what does God want us to do here on this earth? And you hear that all the time. Everybody's looking, what's my purpose? Well, one purpose is to glorify him. That's the main purpose, you know, in all that we say and all that we do. And then there's other things that he has for us to do in different areas. But that's the main thing is to glorify him. Can you help people come to a place where they trust God? Or is that something that they just have to surrender themselves? Right. Right. There's no, like I say, there's no magic here. You have to uh, deal with that, work it out in your own to get to that point. But I'm here to help you. When you have questions, when you get stuck, I'm, I'm here to say, uh, let's let's do this or let's do that let's try this and really communing with God and being with him will help you understand and get to a different point let's talk for a minute about people who get stuck mm -hmm. and sometimes go through life that way yes is there anyone any way to help them is there any way that we can help them get unstuck right and, and like I say, the, when, when you are stuck, the main thing is coming to that place of almost a disillusioned state to say, I'm stuck. Admitting it. Yes, I can't do this. It's hard. I, I just can't do it. Because we try and put on a brave front, front right, and right. act like everything's okay. And that will, that will kill you. <laughs> Physically, you, you have high blood pressure, you have all this stress, you wonder why your hair is falling out, you're, you know, you're just not healthy because you're holding on to something that you need to, you know, awareness and acknowledgement is freedom. And that's where we've got to begin. We've got to say that, you know, state it, put it out there. And if it means journaling to get past that point or, um, you know, coming to see me, yes, 
uh, periodically. And like I say, I'm, I uh, try to keep you going and help you get through certain points the best I can. Um, I pray for all of my clients to help them get to certain points. And um, of course, I want them praying for themselves as well. <laughs> but um, that's when, you, when you're stuck, you've got to really, that's the main thing, is really acknowledging it. And then it, sometimes it's like a fear, you know? I don't want to deal with it. And that's okay. I just tuck it away yeah, I and don't, ignore it. Right. While, you're, while your hair's falling out, while you're just breaking down. Losing weight yeah, or losing, eating you know, everything or, you can or find. Or the opposite, right. So I'm saying uh, let's, let's get, become aware of it. Let's look at that fear. And we, we look at fear is not of God. So we know, you know, Satan's trying to take you out of here. That's mm. what he's doing. So now it's up to you. It is a choice. You make a choice every day to do what is right. You, do, you make a choice. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit is there to help. And thank God for the Holy Spirit because he reminds us who we are. And that's a constant, that's an everyday thing. Because as soon as you wake up in the morning, Satan is there too. But greater is he who is in within us than he that is in the world. So we already know we got the power to do, to pass, to pass through it. But we, we know God wants us to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good experiences, bad experiences. It seems like for many of us, the bad experiences have more weight. Why is that? Well, once again, we are fallen. Uh, you know, uh, we, we're, we're coming from, even though we, we came from Adam and the fall. And so, of course, then uh, that's gonna come up first, it seems. But now, uh, and, and, and that's Satan, he's bringing the bad on a, re on a re regular basis. So that means we have to continue to put the, the good thoughts in more as well. So we have to constantly yes, think that's about it and right. speak scripture. Yes, speak the word of God. It's not, gonna ch it's not going to um, let that stay there, it can't stay. And so, yes affirmations through what God has already said. It doesn't have to be specific scripture, but uh, that's, that's the most, I think, the best. You can be a principle of scripture, you state it, but mainly the word of God, r remember it, re uh, memorize it, so that when it comes, the Holy Spirit brings it up to your remembrance. That's what I love, I love it. I'm so glad I did memorize some scriptures because that's what comes to mind. God brings it to mind, even when I don't wanna hear it, He'll, you know, the Remind word, you? Yeah, <laughs> it comes up. <laughs> Teresa, uh, uh, the word says. Yeah, yeah, it comes up and I'm like, thank you, Lord. Some, you know, like I say, and sometimes we don't want to hear it because we deal with our flesh daily. And so yes, that's what, uh, the Satan wants to bring the bad up, but we, we are, like I say, we are conquerors. So you, you're gonna say something? I was just gonna say, you know, the war has already been won mm. on the cross. Yes, so yes. We are just going through this journey. We already know the end result. In talking about staying focused and in, in, in trusting God, um, you can get off track at points, even for, there's little offenses. I mm -hmm. have wrote down in um, Solomon, the book of Solomon, the second chapter 15 verse says, catch for us the foxes the little foxes that ruin the vineyards are vineyards that bloom. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have these little offenses. Someone just looks at you wrong mm -hmm. or says something in a way that you don't think is appropriate. And you know, you hear people say, that just ruined my day. That's a choice. It's a choice. Yes. I, I decide who ruins my day. I don't, I don't accept that. I don't accept you just saying uh, that just ruined my day. I'm not going to let you just ruin my day with something you've said. I'm going to analyze that and say, okay, is that true? Is that really true about me? And if it's not, I'm letting it go. Release it. That's How not, do you do that? How do you just it's say, a, okay, it's gone? No, it doesn't happen that fast. Sometimes it lingers on. But once again, once you are in the Word of God and you are studying and you're in that Word every single day, that's your avenue. That's your only hope, <laughs> you know, to deal with anything here on this earth. 
is to deal with who created it to have that relationship now i'm i'm um, i've grown in the word and I'm, i've got much growing to do but as you mature in your faith you see okay this person said that what was wrong with that person you know uh, did they have a bad day did they uh, were they hurt as a child, you know, for somebody to say something to hurt me or to offend me or allow something to come out that was not nice? And then I try to show grace. Grace. Yes. Unmerited favor. Oh, I do, because God shows grace to me every single day. Oh, my God, so much grace. So I try to show that to other people. The thing that um, I wonder about, too, is do you ever have folks come in to see you? They don't know that they're angry. They don't know that they're bitter. They don't know that they're jealous, mm -hmm. that right. those things are going on in them. Right. And they might, and I'm just saying this, they might think, it, well, it's the other person. Mm -hmm. All the time, yes. <laughs> it happens a lot. Uh-huh, yes, okay. yes, yes. Everybody looks at the other person. What I do, and I, as I talk to them, I can I, sh I begin to point some things out. This is what you just said. I heard you. I'm sitting right here. You said this. You said that. And then they begin to think, Wow, I, I did say that, and, and maybe I am angry. And so, and I said, in dealing with that, you've got to focus in on yourself, not not someone else. That's the only person you can change and do better with is you. The other person, it depends on how you deal with them, that you allow them to get you to that particular point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. So uh, I need you to focus in on you and, 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 and getting better. And, and, and if you, um, and I show you, you're angry, you're, you're fearful. A lot of times that's, that is it. Uh, maybe I've been devalued and, and they're angry about mistreatment or disrespect and the way they respond and talk to me I can hear it and then I can show it to them and then I say do you hear yourself there it is I'll try to show it to them it takes a lot of strength to look within yourself absolutely many years ago I read the book um, Purpose Driven Life when they when it first came out with by Rick Warren oh my gosh that book was very cutting, very hard to, because I was a little prideful in my life. <laughs> I well, thought I, 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 thought, I thought I knew a few things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but uh, so yes, it's hard to acknowledge that. And so you find that people may self-medicate with alcohol, oh, drugs, yeah. mm -hmm. sex, pornography? Yes, anything. Any, Yes, absolutely, any of that. How do you help them overcome that? It sounds like it might be a long road. Well, now, depending on, if it's addiction, I refer out. I'm okay. not a addic uh, addiction specialist. Um, so I will refer out to uh, people who have more knowledge in that area than I do. That was not my niche. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. And then, of course, once they can deal with that, then we can go back and deal with other things. So they have to deal with the addiction mm -hmm. before they can deal with what's underneath? Right, and usually the addiction counselor can do that. Yeah, they can begin to do that. Okay. Yeah. Problems like marriages, we mm -hmm. have a lot of broken marriages. Mm -hmm. I mean, we resemble in the church, the world, mm -hmm. broken marriages, uh, single female-headed households, mm -hmm. struggling to be both mom and dad. Mm -hmm. How do you help them deal with those issues? Because they, in terms of the single woman, she's got a lot on her plate. Yes, she does. And I am so sorry. That is not a good place to be. And you know, that's, that's not, that wasn't designed, that wasn't God's design to have, um, you know, to, to be by yourself and, and having to deal with children and whatever. That really, that wasn't the best design. Uh, but things happen because of the fall of our world. But in, in um, a lot of times, our single parents have to assess what am I able to do and not try to do so much. I mean, you're by yourself. So you need to pull back sometimes. The child might not can do everything 
and then you can't work and do everything, but find a, a place where you're, you can comfortably live. It's not about working yourself to death all the time and trying to do all the things. Why? Uh, and be stressed out. And I do see that so much. We are uh, working, we're in school, we have a child, and we're trying to do church stuff too, uh, and everything, and, and live. That's a lot. There, there has to be some boundaries set and you have to prioritize. And some things have to just be yeah. cut off. Yes, and wait. I mean, that doesn't mean that you give up on a dream or whatever, but they might need to uh, pull back at this particular time in their life and then look for that later, you know, as they get the child up and growing or whatever. It can be very difficult, but it can, it can be um, peaceful and calm if you pull back and not feel like you have to do so much. But that's not what I hear. That's not what I see. They've gotten uh, most of the time. I see people there at the last end of their rope. They're trying to, like I say, go to school. And I'm thinking, I'm talking. They already have a major profession, and they're going for more. And they're trying to have their child in everything, and pushing the child, and dealing with an ex possibly, or just dealing with life in general. That's a lot. And I'm thinking, why are you going to school and you're trying to take care of your child and you're trying to do this and you're trying to do that? It, it, sometimes you just have to pull back. In terms of marriages, mm -hmm. what are the struggles that you see them dealing with? I see where men are not being the men of their home and women are trying to be the man. And that's, that's not her place. If you, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, the woman wants the man to be the spiritual leader and she's trying to do that. She's trying to take the child to church. She's trying to make sure the child's learning at church and, you know, and, and even at home and the man is not doing his part. I see that a lot where the woman is like, I'm just tired. And then she's not getting any help at home. You know, and I always say, man, if you got the woman outside working, you need to be doing quite a bit at the house as well. Because that's not, I just don't, now I, must, I was a stay at home mom. And of course I got to do several things and my husband was a kind of a traveling salesman and things were done fine. But if you got me outside the home and you're outside the home, then when we both come in, we both got to take care of home. I mean, you, you can't expect for me to do everything and I see that, and they're tired. They're, ta they're trying to help the child with the homework, they're trying to cook the dinner, and you know, I, I see the man sitting in the chair reading the paper relaxing, because he's had a rough day too. I mean, I'm sure he has, but I'm sorry, once you, especially a man, I, I'm saying, once you get home, uh, you're, that's the number two job. Bottom line. So it doesn't end. <laughs> no, at you don't, five get, you don't get to just come and, right, you don't get to just come and sit and do nothing. You know, you need to look after your wife, look after, look after your child, and, and help, assist. Do you usually, are you able to get both the man and the woman to come in and sit down and talk to oh, you? Oh, absolutely. I, a matter of fact, I, I really don't like to counsel otherwise, because they both need to sit and talk things out. And I, and I hear the woman says, he's never talked this much in his life. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, Oh, well, I mean, did you give him time to talk? Did you know? But anyway, but yes, it's amazing. Because there are some criticisms <laughs> of women. We like to control the that's situation. That's right, that's right. And he didn't do it just like I like mm -hmm. it done, so I'm going to do it. And so a lot of things you bring on yourself. Right, and, and, I, and, I, and I try to help a woman, and I'll say, you know what? Just because you like it that way don't mean it needs to go that way all the time. He is a part of this family. You know, it's like, let's come to a, 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 an agreement here and say, you know, I, I used to like it this way, but let me try it your way. You know, marriage is not about you having your way. Have you found that you're able to help them let go of past hurts? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Now, now of course, Satan tries to bring them back up. But yes, some can, can, re can receive freedom, and that's freedom is given by the Lord. I just kind of lead them to that direction, and, and God does that. I don't. I Do they ever that. come back to you and say, "Teresa, thank you so much. I don't know if our marriage would have survived if we I, hadn't." Come I've to had you. many of those. Yes, I've had many of those. Thank God.
to, to God be the glory, not to me. <laughs> he just used me as his vessel. So when you're sitting listening, what do you, the anointing is there. Absolutely, I'm praying. Okay. Because sometimes I'm like, Lord, you're gonna have to help. I have no clue how to deal with this. This is too much. I say that quite often. <laughs> You have to move on this. How do you want me to move? And, and, and that's where I do really feel God's presence right here in the counseling room. He's, he's working and I'm thinking, wow, I don't even know why, I, how did I say that? Now, that's the truth. <laughs> Things come out and I'm thinking, wow, thank you, Lord, because it was him, not me. What are some of the other issues that you come across that you see we're dealing with in the Christian community um, that need to be dealt with? Well, the main things I'm seeing now is children, our children. Our families are allowing our children to do a lot of things that, that are not okay. And you being a Christian couple, you're allowing your child to uh, maybe date too much or, uh, or too early or you're, you're allowing them to talk back to you or to sit in their room or, or, or uh, just do what they want to do. Children have to be taught. Any you can't, boundaries. Yes, you can't, ta you mm -hmm. can't tell a child or, or punish a child for something that you have not taught them. Teach the children. They need and they want it. They may act like they don't, but they need it and it needs to start early. Teach your child what is right. Teach your child what God has said in Deuteronomy 6. He said, and in, 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 in talk to them about me. We, we are supposed to be having children so that they can become image bearers, not of us, don't they? I mean, they look like us, but they're supposed to be image bearers of God. And so that they can show that to their children generations keep going but they will know the word of God and we've got to teach our children and people say our children are so bad our children aren't that bad our you got parents that are not teaching a child to be what they're supposed to be and they're growing up wondering watching TV and doing anything the television show and trust me that's not a good place to get it you know so that's my other thing we've got to teach our children and love our children and not talk about them. Well, Teresa, we just appreciate you so much. <laughs> We've run out of time, but okay. there's a lot more to talk about and we'll have to get together again sometime. But Fantastic. thank you so much for oh, speaking about these issues mm -hmm. in a biblical perspective. Yes, absolutely. That's the only way. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with Teresa Adams. I'm Desiree Frazier, and this is It's Time a program where we look at issues from a biblical perspective. And we'll be doing more of these programs. We invite you to join us. Take care.